social media. So we're going to try our best to help you out here tonight, give you some great ideas, and possibly show you a great way to even update your own fireplace at home. A lot of y'all ask about doing a whitewash on your brick, and I'm going to show you that. And if you'll stay right here with us, we're also playing Paint Paintbrush. Comment right here below to enter in tonight's drawing. We're going to be giving away a $25 gift certificate to the person who is above Melissa declaring the word brush right here in the timeline. A lot of y'all have already played, but if you don't know how, just put paint or any combo of those words so you don't get kicked off of whatever platform you're watching us on here tonight. And we'll be giving that away here on YouTube and on Facebook. So either of those, if you're watching, you can be entered in to win in tonight's drawing. So we're going to be painting first off, starting off with the color linen. Linen is a beautiful soft white color from all-in-one paint. We've already deglossed and cleaned the surface, meaning the wood areas. We didn't do any cleaning on the brick. It's not necessary. Brick being very porous, it's going to work great for using the white antiquing gel. Many of you all do a wash on brick and it grabs. It's very hard to work with. I'm going to show you great way to do that without mixing or un trying to understand what is the proper mix. I'm going to show you a great product that gets it all done and I'm going to show you here. And this is a brick, by the way. This is a faux fireplace, got an electric heater in it, a good one, really a nice one for what it is. And I'm going to be doing the gel stain on the mantle, painting this in linen. I'm going to get that done right now. So I've already got my can of linen opened up. Here is what linen is going to look like, a beautiful soft white. So we have several whites. This is not our brightest white. It may appear that way tonight on the camera, just so you know. I'm going to be using the brush and roll technique. I'm also using our beautiful Syntec brush. If you have questions, post them right here in the timeline and get, uh, get the questions going, and we'll do our best to answer you right here as we move along. This is going to cover great. I'm going to paint right up to this line right here that we're going to, and all the rest of this is going to get done in the gel stain, our walnut wood gel stain. I'm going to show you how that works in just a moment and uh, put the paint on, and I'm going to roll back through that using our little roller and show you kind of the brush and roll technique here. And you can also use the true applicator if you want to stipple, and that helps you get great coverage using a white over anything. And this is a mid-tone oak, and uh, I hope I can show you great coverage here and give you some ideas of how you can transform your own fireplace. And I already made a little drip, and I rarely do that. I got one, so let's go ahead and wipe it off. And, uh, we'll, we'll forgive you since it's Friday. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get this on here quick because I've got a great thing I'm going to show you. And Melissa also came up with this idea just a minute ago that was like, voila, that's what we need to do. So I think you're going to really love what we're going to do to this linen look here in just a minute. So let's get this first coat on. may even have to dry it so we can move it along pretty quick. I'm only going to paint the very front of this with you tonight so you can get the most in this demo and see the before and the after as we finish up here. So get out my true, my little roller that has this open cell foam. If you're using another type of roller, um, if you're just using those solid foam rollers or those little textured velvet filling rollers, they just push the paint around and that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to actually use this roller with an open cell to kind of go in here and finesse and move around the wet paint. We're not trying to apply the paint with the roller, but just try to go in here and work that wet paint around to remove all of the brush strokes. So that's all you're doing. Dry roller right to the surface. And if you can see up close, I'm not sure you can see here up close enough, but uh, hopefully you can tell I'm getting really beautiful finish by going over and lightly rolling this, pushing a little harder than normal because there's a lot of risen texture here and all of this bead board and all of this kind of mimicking an upright kind of a pilaster around and woodworking around this fireplace. And uh, like I said, good looking little fireplace for what it is. So I'll get great coverage here on the second coat and we'd be done just using two coats over oak. So keep going here. Let's keep on rolling. It's just a few minutes. I'm also going to be painting the metal, meaning this piece of brass here. I know a lot of you guys have that on your fireplace. And you want to get rid of it. <laughs> you want to wonder how to get rid of it and do you have to buy four or five products? We're going to be using tonight all together. We're going to use linen. We're going to use the walnut gel stain on top, and we're going to use the whitewash antiquing gel and just a little bit of Corinthian. You could use that's what's going to go on this metal. We're going to add that nice little dark pot or of accent around, right around the door of the fireplace opening here. And I know many of you are going to ask the question: Can this fireplace take heat? Well, yes, it can. And as long as you're painting on the exterior of the fireplace, meaning not inside the firebox, this paint works perfect for doing that. And, uh, give you great results. 
let's move and your little willy cart's a little noisy little tonight. Little has got a lot of going on. He, needs, he needs a little oil, I think, or something. <laughs> He's got a lot of stress on him at this moment. <laughs> He's doing good just to survive this roll that I put him through there. So be gentle and be kind to the weedy, rolly boy. Okay, so uh, oh. using my brush, I hope I'm right in your shot. You are, right, it's really. great. Uh -huh. I no, you're good. Yep. No, oh. it's good. I never know what we're getting mm -hmm. here with our camera moving around a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we're working on mm -hmm. our studio to uh, build our new studio. We're still a little bit out, and we're going to be, when we finish our store here in Taylorsville, we're building a new studio mm -hmm. behind, and can't wait for that. Right now, we are in cramped quarters, I think. Yes. We won't be soon. We sure will have a great spot later. That's we'll already such a huge improvement on this. I bet. I bet it is. Yes. It looks it to me. Uh -huh. So in just a minute, I'm going to show you about whitewashing. So hang with me. I'm going to let this coat dry. And we'll put on the second coat. And then the magic's going to begin. So just in a few minutes, we're going to be able to make this fireplace look amazing. I'm not going to paint the sides right now. We're going to do what makes the most sense and touch up what we need here. And wow, we've got over 900 people on the live with us. Awesome. I think we're going to do two giveaways. Did we say what we're giving away? We're giving away a $25 gift certificate. That's the easiest, and that way you guys can shop tonight with us. Get what you want. Having, what's that? They can get what they want. Yeah, we're having a great promotion just started today. And if you are not in our mailing list or where you would be getting our text messages, check that out on our website at allinonepayton.com, and you will be notified when we're having a great sale or any promotions that we're running, you'll be the first to see them. So you can join them to our text messaging service there. And what is the code? It's that? really easy. Just text the word PAINT to 20122. 20122. Text that word PAINT to 20122. Just go on your phone, go 20122, and then once you see that, send the message PAINT, P-A-I-N-T, and you should be getting text messages. Or if you'll just go to the website at All in One Paint, it will ask you, do you want to join? So. All right, so let's go on and set this aside. Let me grab my next thing. I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside there with Corinthian and get that done. Get our little piece on right the inside. On the metal. Mm -hmm. So on metal, let's talk about that just a minute. Keep playing with our plain paint paintbrush. So keep on playing there, if you will. And comment with the word paint or any combo of that word, and you're going to be entered to win in tonight's drawing. And we're going to be giving more than one away. And right now we're going to give two away, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So Corinthian, and if you're looking here, is a beautiful uh, kind of a warm brownish gray. Now, you can put this in any color you want on your fireplace, whatever that may be. You're going to put it on one coat, and it looks terrible, okay? You're just going to know that when you put it on. You're not going to get a lot of coverage. But it's your first coat going on. You just want to get that coat on that metal. I'm going to quickly get it on here. So you can see it in a minute when we come back and put on the next coat, okay? So bear with me. All good things are coming. Got to always push through that ugly coat. Yep, this is the ugly right here, no doubt. We can hardly even tell what you're doing here on camera. Oh, I'm sure you can. Yeah. I'm sure you can't see this hardly at all, can you? No, not really. Well, i got to get it on here. Yep. you got to bear with me. Now, I'm not going to be able to stipple this at this moment, but I'll stipple on the next coat. So it'll lay down a little more product. So let's just get this on here so it can dry. Get this on a good bonding coat so the next coat will come on. While you're doing show. that, I'm going to show them some customer photos. Oh, show them, please. Yes, lots of great photos. All right. Here's some great uh, fireplace makeovers we got from our group here. Let me see. If you're not a member of our group, comment here. We'd love to send you the link to join our Facebook group. You can also see that on our website of how to get in our group. About 300,000 members there using the products, posting their examples every single day. Mm -hmm. So there you've got one from Amy Melville Hill. I have a feeling Paula may have had a typo on that one on Instagram, but we're going with it. That might be her name. Sorry, Amy. I have a feeling it's Mulville, but uh, she's Cashmere Stonehenge and Abby. You can see she did a beautiful stencil there over that tile. Really changed the entire feel of that fireplace. And then let me bring you over another one here. There we go. And now I've added Patty. Patty did a combination of a couple different paints there on her brick. Looks like she's got some cobblestone and maybe some Colosseum and maybe some weather vane in there. Really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. Totally pretty. changed the feel of that. You ready to move on? I'm ready. I'm right. ready when you are. Uh, now I have to figure out how to get this off the screen. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Now I got to figure out how to get it off the screen. Uh-oh. Hold on. 
She'll get it. There it is. Okay. Okay, yeah. good deal. Hold on. There you go. All right. No, I don't. Hold on. <laughs> There you go. You there we go. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so the next product that we're going to be putting on, and this is this product is going to work on so many of your surfaces. If you want to whitewash something like a fireplace or any other materials that you want to soften your tile backsplash, um, your project, for instance, maybe you've painted a piece and you just want to soften it and make it more of a pastel color. This product is an awesome way to do that. But the beautiful thing, what I'm going to do here is going to really save you a lot of stress and trying to worry if you're going to whitewash something. Let's just get in here and I'm going to push it right in this area using this chip brush because I don't want to, da I don't want to damage my good brush. And also you can cut right in with this. You're going to put it on and you're going to rub it back to the degree that you want. Pushing it right down into all of the mortar joints, all of that. You just want to get in there and you want to work in small areas quickly. And then you're going to rub it off very, very soon, okay? You don't want it to sit here and soak. Because you're going to try to dial it back some to reveal <clears throat> the pretty brick, okay? So as much as you want. I'm using a dry cloth. You could get in here with a wet one and do the same. That's so much easier than trying to figure out some sort of a formulation and using something loose like watered down paint. So let's keep going. And you're going to see this transform in just a matter of minutes. put on a good thorough coat. You could even dry brush. I'll just show you a dry brush technique. If you just wanted to dry brush, you could do that too. If you're a little afraid of maybe going all in, you could just do a dry brush technique. Look at that. Just very little product on my brush. Just getting in there and roughing it around. See that? What you're going to get? A totally mm -hmm. different look. And that may be exactly what you're after. If you uh, have to do, if you kind of subscribe to that German schmear look, uh, from the Gaines family, that's uh, something that always do. See so many people wanting to do German schmear on the pieces. You can easily do that, but you're going to do this with no smell, and you could put this on any type of masonry, meaning rock, and, um, anything, whatever it is that bugs you in your home. If it's a masonry piece built in, you can do it so easy with this product. And uh, it's up to you if you want to use a watered down paint. You can do that too because all of them are going to work the same. But my preference is using this. So many people are saying they're so happy you're doing this demo because they've got a fireplace they great they need to work on. Yeah, I think this is what it's a pain point for people for sure. Yeah, it is. Um, it really is. And especially thinking if I've got to go mix up some random mixture and everybody's always saying, what's the recipe? How did you do that? And uh, you can with paint, like I said, but why do that? This is sealed. It doesn't need you to do anything further. You're done. You're just one and done. So let's get the bottom. Are you able to see this on camera, Mel? Uh, yes, actually we are. Good deal. Uh, Patsy wants to know if you can clarify for her what is a chip brush. Chip brush is this little brush I'm using, just a little throwaway brush, and uh, they're made out of real natural hog hair, and they put bristles in everything. So just know up front, it's not something that you do any fine painting with. I use this when I want to throw the brush away, or I just want to get in here and this is going to eat up a good brush. Mm -hmm. Getting in here and you know really scrubbing around on all this rough masonry. I don't want to do that to my good syntax. I just want to use this and be done with it. So Josh, Jocelyn, that's hard to say on a Friday. Uh, let's know: Is it safe to have all these paint products next to a fire? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So as long as the fire's not touching where you're painting, you're good. Yeah, these are not products that are made out of urethane here. This is not going to blow up or yeah. smell or gas off yeah. or anything. These are very low, low odor paints, and they're all waterborne. Yeah. The only thing we're going to use that will vary from that is this product we're going to put here on top, and that is going to be our gel stain here in just a minute. Yeah. Use on. Is that not looking great? Yeah, it's great. I hope you love that. Yeah. And I'll tell you guys, I have my own personal fireplace painted. It doesn't have brick around it, but it has a travertine tile that's unsealed, so very porous, just like this brick. And I did a whitewash on it, and I painted this around, uh, just like we're doing here. And I never even knew how hot the tile actually got until people started asking questions about, can it hold up to how hot it is? I'm like, does it really get that hot? And I touched it, it really does get that hot. And I've had it painted for years. It's not a problem at all. I stand right on the tile, like where Paul is painting now. I stand on that to warm my legs up against the fire when it's cold. <laughs> so I stand on it all the time. It doesn't hurt it. It's not coming off. 
This whitewash is available in a pint as well as in this eight ounce jar that I'm using here. And this was a product that we've had sitting out here using forever. It takes so very little, I know you're seeing how little I'm dipping on this brush, just the tiny tip ends of it. There's no need of overdoing it. You just get enough on there and just push it right down in the brick and get down in all those little holes. That's what you want to do is fill up the little holes with little gouges and then you go back in there and just kind of rub it off. Now, if you wanted to take more off, you could go get yourself a little spray bottle and rub more and dampen uh, the brick area if you want, but actually it's coming off without all of that effort right now. It's just coming right off with us, with this rag, just to ease of that. A lot of people are asking how we prep the metal. When we went around that, we did use the deglosser on yes, that. Yes, the deglosser, and I'm gonna go back again yeah. and paint more on this as this begins to dry. It'll give me a good base coat to get in there and put on the uh, additional coats to cover that brass. And so orders right now, a lot of you are asking, uh, we're about four days out right now on orders. It might go up to five here with the weekend, but we're gonna crank them out pretty quickly. So it's not too bad if you're ordering from our site. And hey, you're going to get a great deal. So we didn't talk about the promo earlier. Uh, Paula mentioned we were having one, but we didn't say what it was. Oh, sure. So <laughs> we want to give you our high quality brush because we want you to have it. And we know you're going to need it to have a successful project. So if you buy a quart of paint, which is $38.99, we're going to give you a $30 Syntec brush for free. So you're going to add both of those to your cart and you're going to use the coupon code FREEBRUSH1 and that will make that brush free. And if you would like two brushes, we're yeah. even going to do that. So in that case, you're going to add two quarts, and they can be mix and match. Two quarts of paint to your cart. You're going to add two of the Syntec brushes, and then you're going to use the coupon code FREEBRUSH2 because I'm real creative in creating the coupon codes. Uh, so you're going to use FREEBRUSH1 or FREEBRUSH2, and you're going to add everything to your cart, and that's going to make those brushes for free. And that's an awesome deal, by the way. These brushes are $30, yeah. and uh, it's and so they, awesome that we do them for yeah. free. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of you who are watching have the brush, and I know a lot of you that are watching who don't have the brush are wondering, do I really need a $30 brush? So those of you who have bought it, if you'll you help me out brush. and comment and tell them how great this brush is and what a game changer it is in your project, that would really help us out. Thank you. Well, the great thing is I always tell you, it's kind of like a carpenter. Um, it's all about the tools that you use, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a good brush, you can't expect to get a good painted result, especially. Yeah. You know, a saw will cut. Mm -hmm. A good saw cuts even better. You know, it's the same mm -hmm. thing with painting. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to uh, get a great finish. Yeah. And when you hire a professional painter, they're, they're, not, not, coming to your, they're not coming to your house with a, a dollar brush. They're coming no. to your house with very expensive brushes. That's all they use. They don't use junky brushes. They use only Wooster Purdy something they pay a lot of money for. And the reason being that it produces a different finished result. Mm -hmm. And they're not wasting their time using junky brushes. So the same with our product. This brush works perfect with our product. We designed it to work with this product. And uh, you can go get an Amazon brush, but you're not gonna get the same finished look. I promise you that. So, <laughs> Leanne wants to know when your thumb saver is going to be available. Working on I should have my uh, change just, drawing tonight, by the way. Just like they call the true applicator the stippler. The thumb Now the panties is going to be the thumb saver. <laughs> I love thumb it. Thumb saver. I like thumb saver. I like that. It's a great yeah. name, actually. Uh -huh. I might have to get a back saver after I get it. <laughs> Good thing you thought to bring me my little stool. I right know, I would have been brutal if not. Painful. Yeah. To sit here and kind of squat and do this. Mm -hmm. So y'all need one of these two, these little sight, these little roly things here. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. but we don't like far. Look how far we've gotten. Yeah. Are I mean, y'all liking the results yeah. so far? A huge difference. Well, wait till we wait till you see what we're gonna do in a minute. So yeah. We're not no, we're nowhere near done, by the way. So, Christina, you're asking, uh, you just painted a kitchen table with our paint, and do you need to use a top coat? The answer is no, you do not. We will not be doing any top coating here, not on the mantle, nowhere. Uh, you don't have to seal your kitchen cabinets. You don't have to seal that tabletop. The paint has an exterior grade sealer built right in, so it's super, super dirty. It's dry, and don't do any scratch yep. tests on it until it's had time to cure, Christina. Yep. It's the main thing. It's going to be soft for a bit, so... Use some place mats. Don't get in there and uh, wet and clean on it just at this time. Give it a good four or five days to harden up, and then it will uh, be good and durable. 
Jenny, for cabinets, I want you to check out our uh, Paula's technique called brush and roll. You can see examples of that on our website, allinonepaint.com, and uh, also on our YouTube. Oh, yeah, she did it here. That's right. Um, and she'll be doing it again here on coat two. That's what you're going to want to do on your smooth cabinets. Absolutely. That's going to help you get great coverage and a great finish. And so many of you, I'm seeing all your comments now about how wonderful the brush is. Thank you Thank for that. Thank you very much. You know, I always say this. I, I don't want to encourage you to throw everything you've ever thought about painting away and just say, hey, I got nothing I'm, you've ever bought works and throw out all your good brushes. Don't do that. Just try it. But you do need a quality brush. So if you don't have a great brush, it's a great time to get one if you don't have one. But a uh, quality brush is different in a lot of people's eyes. So keep that in mind. If you bought those round brushes, those are designed for chalk paint and they don't give you the finish that you're going to get using the Syntex. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. That round brush does not work. The old Annie Sloan brush, that's not the kind of brush that you need to actually paint with because you're trying to get a smooth finish here, not that chunky, rusty, heavy look. rusty yeah. mm -hmm. the distressed looking mm -hmm. finish. If you are, it's going to be okay. If, you know, it's just all about putting on some product with those brushes, not putting it on in a nice way. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Yeah. Putting it on smoothly. Mm -hmm. Well, I should have said not in a nice way. <laughs> In a nice, smooth way. So, Pamela is asking, can you paint the brick or can you only use the whitewash on it? Oh, you can paint the brick. We're just trying to give that, let that brick show through because a lot of people want that German schmear look. They want a, a look that's not solid. So, definitely you can paint it for sure. You can just paint it solid white here. Yeah. We're trying to keep some of the integrity of the brick here. And a lot of people, you know, they love their brick. They just, they don't want to paint it and make it look painted. They want to Yep. kind of get uh, a hybrid and that's what this is a hybrid. if you want to see example of what uh, brick looks like painted white I've actually we've got a video on our YouTube channel where I painted my mom's fireplace in cashmere she had brown brick and she wanted it just solid white and uh, it still looks gorgeous today and that's been oh, just several several years yeah it's been a while we've been at this for a while girl uh-huh Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Time flies when you're putting everything under the sun. So Kimberly wants to know, does the debosser hurt uh, cabinets that are made out of particle board? It does not. No. You've got to use that debosser. Clean, no matter what, where, what they're made out of, yeah. you're going to have to clean. And new cabinets, uh, whatever they are, you need to clean because there's all kinds of things, even in the lumber yard. Uh, if you've gone over and bought cabinets that are in a box and that kind of stuff, and you think, oh, they're clean. They don't need cleaning. They do need cleaned, and they do need all of those uh, things that come from packing and all that. Manufacturers spray on silicones to keep all of their internal packing from sticking to the new cabinets, and that will definitely hinder the paint from sticking, so you definitely need to clean that off. Don't skip the cleaning step, believe me. It's the most important thing that you do. The paint's original bond, meaning the first layer that went on, if you choose to go out and buy a primer and put under this, make sure you buy the best primer you can um, because that is where the bond is set with that primer coat. It's not going to be with this something going on top of it. It's happening in that very first original coat. So this paint contains its own bonding primer that is superior to any primer that I've ever seen. So if you think there's one out there better, and you like it better, that's great. But uh, primers can cause texture and all kinds of great things with this paint containing its own bonding primer. It's not necessary to put on the bonding primer of any kind. Mm -hmm. So Mary Beth wants to know, what do you think about just whitewashing over uh, kitchen cabinets, like straight over the oak or something? Well, I would think that sounds good. <laughs> in theory, will it look good in reality? You know, it depends on how good you are with, with doing this. We did some in our old uh, office building that in the kitchen, and we did a washed finish, but we actually painted them first. But, mm -hmm. but they were a straight, flat door, very modern, contemporary-looking kitchen, and we did that. And it turned out great, but I can't imagine what it would look like if you had detail in the door, like a risen panel, raised oak panel doors. Trying to get in there and do all that, you may end up with a mess, but hey, you know what? You may be great at it and you may have a smooth door. I would try it and see. Open the interior of the door and try it. There you go. You wouldn't mess anything up then. That way you can see if you like that look before you get going to the head. Oh. You know, I totally forgot. I called our first winner earlier and forgot to announce it. 
And luckily I screenshot it because you know I already forgot the name. I'm sure I would have too. Uh, it is Terry Ann Cosby. Terry Cosby? Yep. Terry Ann Cosby, you are the winner. So uh, send Melissa at HTC an email and she's going to send you that code so you can get to shopping. Yep. And we're going to we're going to keep on playing, so keep going. You know, I'm going to put on some more linen so yep. I don't, so I can get this dry while I'm putting on that. Okay. Yep. So we got a couple new people coming on. So for those of you who are wondering, so far what uh, we did before we got on camera, we did give the whole fireplace a good deglossing, cleaned it really well with our surface prep deglosser. Paula's got one coat of linen on the surround, and she's going in for coat number two right now. Yep. And Jenny, she's doing that brush and roll that I wanted you to see. Put on uh, paint and roll right through that wet paint lightly with your dry roller. Main thing, dry roller, wet paint. Don't put the paint on the roller, put it with the paint on with your brush. And go over it with a light roller. Real light pressure. Yep. And then we've uh, done a coat of whitewash antiquing gel on the brick and wiped it back, exposing some of that brick coming through to give us some kind of tonal look. And uh, here in a minute, we're going to be showing you how to deepen the tone of the wood on the mantle. And then we've got a fun finished plan for you here on top of the linen. Hang so on hang for that. Tight. Yeah, hang on for that. You're going to be amazed at what this is going to look like in just a minute. We're going to antique this whole thing down, and it's going to be pretty. You're going to like it. All right, so that gives us two coats there. And uh, get all the little runny areas. That's one great thing about the true applicator and using this roller. It takes away any areas that you might, that have you got a little too much heavy hand on there and you've got a little paint might run. It actually will help you reduce all of that if you just be watching really good where you're going with your brush mm -hmm. and then where you're going with the roller. We made a big change here already? Wow. Yes. Yeah. We made a huge change already. Stay out of your camera here. Okay. So there you guys. There you, uh, I can't talk. It's Friday. So there you go, guys. There's two coats. This is over a medium oak. So when I hear a lot of you saying you're doing four and five coats of white, it just tells us you're not putting on enough paint. You see, Paula's putting on a good liberal amount of paint because it yep. takes a thickness to cover. Color. Yeah, really. You have to leave I mean, something yeah. behind. You yeah. have to be putting on something. Yes, you can thin the paint so much, there's nothing there to hide. You know? With a white, especially. Mm -hmm. With a white, especially. Yeah. White does struggle always to cover because it doesn't have color, so everything is going to radiate through. It's kind of like putting on a white dress. You can see your bra through. Sorry, guys, if y'all had to hear that, but <laughs> you know already what I'm saying. You're, you know, your underwear will show, or whatever it is you want to call it, you're there. So you always have to think in terms. And, uh, you have to put on enough to cover. So two coats covering over this right here is all it takes, even with all this great detail, because I'm putting on some paint. And I'm going to stop putting on paint because we need it to I'm dry. Gonna, I need it to dry. Whoops, I'm, gonna, whoops. I'm done with that, and I'm going to take that. So, Sides, not worried about any of that right now. If you're watching, mm -hmm. wondering is she gonna come back and paint that? Yes, <laughs> just not right now. <laughs> it might be a year from now, but yeah, we're yeah, gonna paint the sides of this thing eventually. Yes, it'll, <laughs> it'll get it. She's already made me take a photo of the side just to make sure I painted it, <laughs> just to make me do that. All right, so here goes the second coat going over here, this brass. Mm -hmm. Can you see how great that's covering now? Yeah. we put on our little scratch coat in the beginning. It had to be the bond. There we go. And she's using Corinthian there, which is uh, our color that's kind of like an oil rub bronze color. Really, really pretty. So we're just killing off this brass here. Oh, goodbye to your brass mm -hmm. there. So that took 100 years off of it, did it not? It did. That changes the feel of it the most, probably. Between painting the brick and that. And that does. So I'll just put that on that. <laughs> All right. She's just wheeling all around there. Uh -huh. Jackie, this is linen. I know it looks really white on your screen um, because we're under studio lights. 
but it is uh, the creamy linen color. Yeah. To say it's real creamy cream, it's really just a soft white. Soft white. If you want a creamier white, go to Manor House. That's a beautiful one without it being a yellow. It's a gorgeous white. Or even better yet, order the color, uh, your sample, and get our color card because that way you can see it. Yeah. I never want you to order paint guessing on here what you think these colors look like online because everyone's monitor and phone and all will all look different. And uh, there's no way you can choose colors accurately. So get our color card and then you can really see what something's going to look like in your home. And uh, that's my best advice to you. Guess on something here and say, I believe that's the color I like. We show you a wet sample online. We try our best to show you enough examples that you can get an idea. So you can choose your sample and get that to your door. And that way you can see it on that card right at your house, right in your light, and make a better decision, okay? But you can't go wrong just getting your sample. All right, so there's that. What do you guys think of changing over that brass? Didn't that just make a huge difference? They probably can't remember how ugly it was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't remember how ugly it was, say something, right? <laughs> it was really brassy. Alright, so see, now I can go back on camera and see we've got some light, dark, or dark spots kind of peeking through right there. You know what? I, just, I, I never tell you all this, but whenever I can't figure out how something looks, you know what I do? Take a picture of it. Then look at it. Man, you can see all the problems with it then, including your makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were just showing us your best side there. Oh, you know, yeah. You're not going to be happy when you see that. My camera. <laughs> <laughs> you hang around and see she all kinds of stuff in here. She always tries really hard not to turn her back to the camera like Me that. and you. We all try <laughs> yeah. that, but it ain't no, always mine, was, mine would take over the whole shot, so. <laughs> and then they couldn't see anything and else. you said that. I did not. <laughs> I know I got a big butt. I can't help it. <laughs> cannot lie. Well, you're setting up for... Got a big uh, butt. She cannot uh, lie. That's what she's trying to say. <laughs> you want to have to kick me up just a little bit here, yep. maybe. Maybe be yeah. Thank you, can't talk. I know. It's like we're at a loss for words today. There we go. Well, you're setting up. I'm going to show them a couple more. Uh, sure. You go right ahead. Maybe. If I can. This will cooperate with me here. All right. I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing here on the top while she's looking. Mm -hmm. And I am using gel stain. And this is our walnut gel stain. It comes in this color. And I'm going to get started right on this edge so you can see this beautiful oak go away. <laughs> Sad to say. Mm -hmm. I want it to go away, but... I want this yellowed oak to go away. I'm just using a chip brush again. I'm going to throw it away when I'm done. Just going to cut that mantle right in there. And do this and darken this down. I'm reaching this up. And just make it pretty. And put all this on. Now I can rub, I can leave this on like it is. Or I can go through that and rub it off with a rag. I need to rub some of it off. I don't know. Gotta get back and look. Y'all tell me. Should I take some off? Or leave it on here as full as it is? You can always go back and take off too much, is a great thing. When you're painting away there, I'm going to bring this one right. over. I'm going to show them. This is actually one of my favorites. This is Lori Heron's fireplace. Oh, and I yeah. believe she did that in linen, I'm pretty sure. Uh, just did a whitewash over that brown brick, and look what a difference that made. Mm -hmm. It does. Looks great. Huge. I remember that one. I remember oh, it that says it down there at the bottom. It's actually cashmere, sorry. Oh, is it? Hard to tell in photos. It is. I wrote it down at the bottom of the photos, but that one's so little. All right, so there is the brushed on edge. Now what are we getting here? Look at it the depth of this color. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Can you see the difference bit. there between the oak at the top and then the oak on her edge? Now, this is the product that I told you got a little smell to it. So just kind of know that going in. I'm going to rub it back and kind of keep the grain going. But I'm going to leave all that depth and dark on there. Just kind of rub a little off. Just soften it a bit. Donna says this is what she's been waiting for. Oh, so great. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for saying that. Sometimes we wonder what y'all need to hear, see, or do, and we don't know that all the, all the time. Glad to hear you. This is something you've been waiting on. We get a ton of questions about it, though. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's posted, somebody comes back and says, that's what I've been trying to figure out how to do, you know? So here we are. I'll help you. Mel found this great fireplace. Of all places, guess where? Marketplace. <laughs> yep, marketplace. Let me know. 
All right, so let's get all this on, then we'll take it all off. This product stays open a little longer than uh, normal stains. It's, again, sitting topical. This is something that's not absorbing into the wood. It goes right on without you having to sand or strip. You just put this right on something, even if it's a sealed tabletop or your fireplace has got a, a clear coat on it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do anything. Just get it clean, and then let's uh, put the stain on Leave it heavy, or you can take it back thin and just tone with it. It's up to you. What look you're after. This is you're seeing it start to finish. What you need to do right here. There's no other steps in between. Well, we are still playing paint, paint, brush. So keep on commenting. You could use a graining tool right now if you wanted to do that. I do not. I don't really want any heavier grain than's here, any fake grain. I'm just going to use this rag. Remember, all I want to do is tone, and I'm using this terry cloth rag, and it's putting in here a nice little grain for me already. Can you see that? Long streaks is what the best. It is the best way to do it. Long straight lines, and then let that just kind of dry. It's going to look just like the wood. Debbie, uh, on top we are using our walnut gel stain. And just take off as much as you want. I'm just lightly pulling it to keep the lines nice and straight. It looks just like dragging a graining tool, actually. You do the same effect. So I'm lightly lifting and pull back here. Because it's very difficult to pull a straight line all the way across something long unless you get a curve in it almost every time. Debbie's wanting to know if you sanded the top first. No need to sand here at all. No sanding. That's there. a four-letter word for us. Yeah, we don't do no sanding here at that's Heirloom. A, no. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of work and a lot of mess, and we don't have time for that. <laughs> so, no need. These so, products are yeah. meant to not be sanded, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah. So. Paula invented products that wouldn't need it just because we don't like it. We up the bonding ability of these paints. And like I said, the earlier shot here is... The paint has its own bonding primer built into it. So you do not have to go in here and add any kind of a primer. So I had to get in here and make a little boo-boo. That's okay. So I'm gonna have to take my dryer out here and Melissa's gonna talk to you about some. Do you have some other photos? You wanna go back through some of those now? Yeah. I'm gonna dry this real quick because sure. my last mm -hmm. step is the most important one. And I'm gonna show you the magic red mm -hmm. Okay? Turn my heater on. This is making a little noise, all right? Yeah. All right. So, um, Shelly wants to know: Can you use the paint on a painted door, or the stain on top of a painted door? Yes, you absolutely can. A lot of people do that and make their door look like uh, wood, and it's really, really pretty. Yeah, you can do that. And I'm trying to get you some photos up here. Bear with me just a second. You all chat. I don't want to have to get off. <laughs> take a minute. And this one does not want to go away, so we're going to leave it up there. All right, so let me pull over some here, show you the stencil. Again, this was Amy Moville Hill's um, beautiful fireplace. She stenciled over that tile. I'm sure she deglossed it, obviously, and then she painted it with um, cashmere, and then she used Stonehenge and Abby to do that beautiful stencil, totally changing the feel of it. Let me see what else I can get up here for you. This one's Patty's that has the multi-tonal look where she changed it from the red brick fireplace and she used some grays and some whites and uh, some darker, it looks like weather vane in there to really transform that. And let's see, I think I got one more for you here if everything will cooperate that I haven't shown you. There we go. This one's uh, Holly's. Uh oh, hold on. I'm a mouse user and I don't have a mouse on this computer and it just throws me off there. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. That's Holly Haskins Phillips um, and she used cashmere on this and then she went back and very subtly dry brushed some cobblestone on that tile. Can you see that? And really made it look like marble. It's really, really pretty. Totally changed the feel of that. And then you've got Amy Herons up there in the corner. And she used uh, cashmere as a whitewash over all of that brick. Totally changed the entire feel of her room. Really, really pretty. Paula's still drying away, so I'm going to remind you one more time about our sale. 
and uh, remind you that we are playing paint paintbrush. We're going to call winter here in just a minute, so keep commenting with your uh, word or variation of paint. But if you want to shop the sale, it is this weekend. And while supplies last on these brushes, I want to make sure we don't uh, run too low here. So I might have to call it a little bit early. I'm hoping not. Um, but you're going to go to allinonepaint.com. You can get a free $30 brush. It's a Syntec brush that Paul has been using um, to paint the linen tonight. And all you have to do is buy a quart of paint. So any color you want, $38.99 for a quart. You're going to add the quart, add the brush, and you're going to check out with the coupon free brush one. It's all one word and it's the number one. If you'd like to get two of those brushes, and I promise you it's really handy to have two. Uh, yes, if you're yes. impatient like me, you're going to want the two. So you're just going to add two quarts, and they can be different colors. You're going to add two brushes, and then you're going to use the coupon code FREEBRUSH2 instead of one. And that'll make both of those brushes free. So big, big savings there, and you got to have a good brush. All right, guys, here goes the magic, and I'm right. going to we doing? try my best not to muddy this up because i got some areas that might be a little too wet to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because I can't wait to show you this. <laughs> you know me, impatient I, me. Okay. I tell you, the wood on that mantle looks so expensive now um, where it looked yeah, really cheap before. Change mm -hmm. Yes, changed it enormously. So I'm going to go around. I am using now the gel stain that I just did on the mail. I'm coming around. Same product. I'm going to use this on this fireplace just so you can see how gorgeous. If you saw me do my bench in my house, this is going to give you that same look. Just putting it on the same way, putting it on using the same brush. Just going to put it on there and look at this. That way we're keeping all these same tones going here. Mm-hmm. Same tones. Going to add that beautiful vintage tea stain look to your white. And you don't have to do this step. This is totally optional, but we just felt like with all this detail, it needed a little something. Well, we couldn't miss that opportunity. It's yeah. pretty. We just had to show you putting a little of that on there now. You don't have to do that. Like you said, you could have it nice and clean nope. and white yep. if you want. There's you nothing like. more classic than bright white and a wood top. Pretty. We could have stopped there. Yeah, but this is a great look, too. Yeah. A lot of you all love this tea stain look and you love that bench and uh, that was a huge post for us. I just wanted to share this idea too. Mm -hmm. Just to class this little paint up a little bit. Pushing it right in those little cracks and all those little ridges and all that filling them up nice. And then taking the rag and just rubbing it off. Do you like this look? Are you liking it? Show us some hearts if you're liking it, because the comments are always on such a delay. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> Plus that you can see side by side here, mm -hmm. one side versus yeah. the other. Mm -hmm. Are you side A or side B? Which one do you want? <laughs> and just keep moving this around. You get it as light as you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can keep removing oh, lots of hearts. You could also go back, if, uh, if this got a little too dark for you, a little too toned, you can always go back and dry brush a little bit of the linen on the highs and kind of brighten that right back up if it got sure a little could. too dark on it. Sure could. Let me see if I like it on camera. There you go. So see how I said, hey, do we want to make it rustic or do we want to go with it? We're rusting it, rusticking it up. <laughs> rusticking it up. Is rusticking work? No. It is now? Say a few. Say a few. <laughs> I think it sounds like a good old English word for me. It's other isms. All right, so there you go. So, uh, hey, I want to give a big shout out to my friend Laura Lacey in Nashville. Laura, hope you're watching us. She uh, works for Dolly Parton and we sent her some paint today to work on one of Dolly's projects. Dolly's doing a beautiful dollhouse and uh, she's doing our a table that sits the uh, dollhouse up in of all colors. What would you think Dolly would choose? Tea rose, right? So <laughs> Laura is doing that. Can't wait to see that project that she's doing. Laura's a friend of mine there in Nashville for a long, long time. She worked with Tammy for a lot of years and all sorts of entertainers through her life. She's had a very colorful life and a fabulous lady. She's actually written a book about pets. And uh, I've got to get a copy of that and see that. It's been so long ago, I almost forgot about it. Laura, she's an author and a wonderful lady. She worked for Dan Aykroyd through her illustrious career and uh, lots of things there. And uh, working with one of the most famous acts on the road, if you will, and recording artists ever in the history of on the planet, and that's Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. One of my faves. Dolly Parton. One of my faves. Of course, she's from East Tennessee, just like I am, and uh, 
sad she lost her brother recently, right along with Tanya losing her brother here. They're just weeks apart. Uh, Randy, y'all remember Randy Parton played in the park and uh, was a friend of mine also and knew him for a, long, a lot of years. And anyway, sad, sad. Mm -hmm. Tanya lost her brother Donald this last couple weeks. And, uh, was a friend of mine too. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you go. I think Dolly Parton's not given enough credit as one of the best songwriters. Oh, she is one of the best songwriters. Well, she may not get, I'm sure she's a reaper benefits of it through the years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, she's a phenomenal songwriter. One of the most heartfelt songwriters ever is Dolly. Mm -hmm. And Nine to Five is still one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's a great one. It's a good one. It's a beauty. Her to beat her in any way. She's just real and just down home, down to earth. Never sees herself as a joke. She's always laughing at herself, and I love that about her. All right. What y'all think? You like it or not? Yeah, you're not. You're not well, saying much. I think we gotta go back and dry brush a little white back over it. Really? A little bit. It got, it, it, got a little, it, it got a little somber, yeah. It's well, a little, it's a little too, uh, brown? too much of a contrast with the brick, I think. Well, let's finish this thing right. before you said that. <laughs> it right. could be. I like it now. It depends. It yeah. depends. Where's it going? You know, right. what your home is. Yeah. home is like. It. And if you've got one of these type fireplaces, you might not have this type yeah. anyway that you could do all this. But keep in mind, you could do this to any type of a mail. You may not want to do this at all. Well, they're they showing great. lots of heart, so I think they oh, like they it. Oh, they like it. Well, cool. I like it, too. I like it, too. See, I'm just a fan of antiquing, though. I like things that look old. Mm -hmm. I like vintage things. When you get old, you like mm -hmm. old, you know? You can appreciate things that have been around a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't agree over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get old, so there. Right. I'm not going to know what you're talking about. No, I hope you don't. I'm going to say 29. Right. <laughs> Forever and ever. <laughs> you sound like, uh, what was that character? Peter Pan. Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to say 29 forever. I think he's never going to grow old. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, now, you can keep on brother because this stuff's pretty fluid. It's still coming off. Pull them white right there, which I kind of like that streak that left in it. Do you like it? Yeah, you're right. Say the word. Pull back from it and look at it. All right, I'm going to get back over here and yeah. see what I think. Yeah. Well, I like it. It's different. I think you got to brighten it back up a little bit. All right, here we go. Drop we'll brush it a little bit. We're going to put on some of the whitewash and tea <laughs> and muddy it up, but we're going to dry it. So, uh, I know she's you can dry brush some of the linen back over it, maybe. She's not loving it. It's just a little, it's a little contrasty there. Right. right. So let's see what that's done to it. Put a little white in it. Let's whitewash a little just bit. Just happy it back up a little bit. Well, the mantle, though, looks phenomenal. All right. Yeah, the mantle looks really good, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Playing? Yep, so we're still playing. Out. We're going to call it here in just a minute. And I'm just lightly putting mm -hmm. this on here because mm -hmm. if I go too heavy, it'll look crazy. And you could go like this across these and just kind of almost do a dry brush just where they're risen here. Are you seeing that at all? Mm, no. Yes, it's showing on camera. Is it? Sure is. Well, my old eyes can't see it, I guess. I mean, my 29 year old eyes can't see it. She <laughs> don't put on over there. She but they are not cute. I'm not putting them on. You get over it and you can't see in front of you. <laughs> you, worry, you won't worry about it any longer, cutie. Or not. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like it. It needed some brightness back to it a little bit there, I think. Well, it's definitely got a dimension to it. Are we messing it up, guys? No. Not as many hearts, so maybe you are. <laughs> maybe they like it better. The tea See? stained. Well, we'll just put it on there. We'll always, we've got we can always go back again. That's the great yeah. thing about paint. You get to 
just keep messing with it till you get it just the way you want it. It's very subtle here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If she, I mean, if she can't even see it with her eye, but you can pick it up on camera, oddly. It's mm -hmm. normally the other way around. Mm -hmm. Now, I could dial this back with a towel, but I'm going to just leave it like it is and just see if I can like it here in a sec. Okay? Don't forget about the whitewash and teaking gel. One of the best yep. products we have, mm -hmm. I think, personally. I get a lot of use out of the antennas, yep. but if you haven't tried them, do try them. Mm -hmm. They're not in part of this sale right now, but it's certainly something to add into your wish list, and you can do that on the website, put it into your wish list. You mm -hmm. Take advantage of the sale going on right now. That's a port sale, but get a brush. So check it out. I'll put a lot, mm -hmm. I'll put that heavy. Just see what you think of that. That ain't bad. Mm -hmm. like that. So you can just dial it back, use your fingers. You don't have to even use a rag. So move it where you want. That's helping it for sure. You like that? Yep. It's tying it all together because now we got the brown, the white and brown, mm -hmm. the bricks kind of looking white and brownish. So, yeah, lots of hearts. They like that better. All right. Sure. I like to listen to you all. <laughs> you tell us and Paula paints. I mean, that's like the DIY cabin. Y'all remember that? They had that on uh, HGTV at one time. I never watched it, but I saw it and I thought, that's a great idea. The DIY cabin that you tell them what to do. I guess they picked out ideas and then you mm -hmm. gave them your idea and they listened to that. So these little guys had a little vote. <laughs> well, they supposedly mm -hmm. were checking their online responses to give you uh, what they're going to do. So and I'm making this one heavier on this side. See if you like this one. Okay. I want to mention too, um, on the brick, so this grout between the brick was actually kind of a, gray. a yeah, light gray, so you're not seeing as much contrast there, but I had brown grout on my tile, and when I went back and did the whitewash over it, it's now white, and that made a huge, huge difference, so uh, you can totally change the color of grout with this. And it's more than my grout, oh, you're all right. <laughs> They knew what I meant. They know. Oh, just, grout, grout on top. I have grout. This is mortar, right? Or is it all mortar? It's all mortar on uh, brick. Well, what's a grout? Grout's on tile. Well, I have tile on mine. Oh, you were talking about the tile? I thought you were talking about your mom's having... Oh, no, my fireplace. Sorry. I oh, heard I'm corrected. Like I'm going to say that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I know grout's a word. I'm so sorry. I know it's a thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I called her down, called her out, and now I'm wrong. But I did call that grout, too, so you're right. Okay. So we're both right. So this would be considered mortar on this, yeah. between brick. Mortar's holding on brick. Mm -hmm. Tile has been grouted. Yeah. All right, I had a little round those screws there that didn't look too swell. All right, so you can see on your right side of your screen, Paula's got the whitewash on a little bit heavier there on the, uh, what would you call that, the molding? Yeah, the little little columns let's the say. columns yep yeah, the so she's got that area. brighter white and on the other side she's got it much more faded so if you like the brighter white i want you to show some hearts and if you like the more stained uh tea stained version on the left i want you to show some thumbs up so we can get it right so we can get a consensus on which one we want and then i've got to make it work on both sides and then she's got to make them match <laughs> please pick the left hand side <laughs> over there uh, the right hand side for them. Yeah, that'll be for you, right? <laughs> Please pick that uh -huh. one because it'll be harder to back it off. All right, I'll wait till here. Uh -huh. say? Oh, it's pretty uh, half and half here. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! We'll, we'll just have to leave one side one way and the other side the other way. So let's try and uh, rub that back with uh -huh. the side. Yeah. So that way that's easy. Let's see. Well, that's pretty good. It's literally about 50-50 coming in here. So so there you go. That's why we make a product that works for everyone. You do it the way you like it. Yep. Let's take a little off over here. Mm -hmm. Take a little off and do a little distressing because it just did that. Hey, I like that. That wet distress it did there. Oh, uh huh. Don't make it over here half an hour. See if I can do that area. Not so you see what she's doing there? She's trying to get it to distress back to the wood a little bit. Where the paint's still all wet. But how quickly we painted that, it ain't gonna do it. it's not wanting to budge already. So when you question the durability, Paula's trying to pull this paint back oh, well, for a distressed look, and it won't even pull back. 
No, it's not going to and, It's been there, man. And we've been on air 42 minutes, so that's how long it's been painted. Now, if you're going to distress and you want to distress this product, you can, but you've got to do it very, very soon. Well, yeah. I call it very green. Like, as soon as it loses its sheen, and as soon as you start to see it starting to dry, and you want to distress, do it then. And it's easy to do using the damp cloth, and you can pull it back and reveal layers underneath or back down to the wood itself. You can do that, but don't go past that little short window. <laughs> I did that. We did a live one time, and we were on Home Talk in front of millions of people. And uh, I don't know what made me want to distress this cabinet. It was a very country looking cabinet. So it, oh, it, it was. It was that one it. with the screen door? It's the one we painted that. 800 times. Yeah, it, this one. was like its debut, you know, mm -hmm. and I decided I'm going to do that. And uh, if y'all did see that, it's worth a good laugh. <laughs> and by the time I finished distressing that thing, I was wringing wet. It was wet. Her shirt was almost see through in the back. Oh, yeah, it was. I didn't know that. You could see straight through my shirt in, on camera. You couldn't in just normal daylight. It was summertime. And Craig was there with us, and during the live, he hands her a paper towel to wipe her He hands me a towel to wipe my face because I'm that wet standing there. Oh yeah, well that's live, doing something live. Uh -huh. Well, it was funny. Looking back, it was very funny. So I always remind myself of that video, be sure, and do the distressing <laughs> early. Yep. Don't wait, don't wait. All right guys, are we looking for our next one? Yeah, I hope we... this answers some questions for you about doing your fireplace and maybe give you some good ideas. And you choose which parts mm -hmm. of this you like and what you don't like. You could stop at any point. So, yep. we, so... Took it a little, we took it all the way for you. That way you can kind of see it start to finish and use that the whitewash antiquing gel to do brick and so many of you choose mm -hmm. me but either way works but mm -hmm. this is the easy way so very easy to dial it back and our final winner is going to be bonnie bickleman bonnie bickleman you're the final winner and just send melissa at htpaint.com a quick email and she's going to send you the code so you can get on and take advantage tonight of the sale that we have going on and get yourself something fun coming in the mail. So thank you all so much for being here with us and hope you have a fabulous weekend and take advantage of the sale, get yourself a brush or get someone, even a friend of yours, you could get one and give it as a gift, great gift to give. And especially to those who enjoy doing DIY, let them know about the free sample and you can give them a brush. So uh, check it out at allinonepaint.com. See that right here on the bottom of this screen and you can see how to go there and get yourself a free sample, allinonepaint.com. I'll pin that right here in the top of this post. And uh, again, we hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Good night. Bye.